In this video we're going to replace our cube with an actual player character model and we're going to set up an animator so you have different states so when it's standing still it plays an idle animation and when you're moving it plays a run animation. Okay let's get right back at it. Uh, so the only thing I've done off camera I just imported a package from the store I own from Cinti with a bunch of models and uh, characters and stuff in there so I'm going to use one of those as my player this guy right here. So this old cube player, we can just delete that. I'm going to drag this guy in and we're just going to kind of get him in place. It should be 0.5 units up. Yeah, he is flat on the ground. Okay, so I'm going to rename this to player. Okay, and the only thing it has on it is this animator, but we're going to actually, we're going to create a, our own because it doesn't actually work. It just says none. Um, but the one thing we want to add the player controllers and because we put that requirement in there, it adds the nav mesh agent on its own. Uh, I do want to just change this radius a bit though to match the player. So something like that. We'll go a little bigger so we can't completely walk into objects and we'll just up the speed and everything again like we did last time. You can play around with that later. I think something like that's probably good though. Okay, so what I want to do is start adding some animations onto it. Uh, I'm just going to use Mixamo.com, this site from Adobe. It's free. You can just sign up and log in. And uh, from there you can get whatever animations you want. So I'm just going to find an idle animation. If you click on them, it'll kind of show you a little preview. Uh, you know what? Yeah, that's good enough. Okay, so you just hit download, hit download again. Okay, so it'll give you this FBX file. You can just drag this right into Unity. Okay, and it's this one here, idle. Okay, so one thing you want to do is with these from Mixamo, I find you, if you go to rig, it defaults to generic for the animation type. Uh, you want to change that to humanoid and then hit apply. Uh, that'll make sure all the bone structure matches a, a human shape. And if you go to animation, this one here that says Mixamo.com, that's the actual animation we downloaded. So I'm just going to rename this to player idle and I'm going to set it to loop. And then you just want to check these boxes to bake the pose. Uh, if you hit apply, uh, I'm not sure exactly what all these do, but I, I did watch some uh, info on the, the Cinti models and they said they always recommend these coming from Mixamo and so far I've never had a problem with them. So, okay, so we enabled that. The one thing I do actually do is if we expand this object now and we go and look, We'll see the player idle animation that we just renamed. I hit control D and it duplicates that. And then I delete this whole package that we imported. Uh, the reason I, I did this, it does work fine if you use that animation, but any of the stuff from Mixamo, it'll come in as read only and you can't modify or do any changes later. So if you wanna end up down the road modifying the animation at all, or even adding an animation trigger event, you can't do it if it's read only. So I just do it now, it just gets rid of the hassle. And at the same time, let's just find a quick run animation. I'll just grab this first one. Yeah, that one looks good. So we'll just download this again. Okay, and just going to do the same thing here. So on the rig, we'll set it to humanoid, apply. And on the animation, I'm going to call it player run. We're just going to set it to loop and bake the poses and apply. Okay, and same thing. I'm just going to duplicate that one. Delete the original. Okay, so we got these. So on our player right now, it will move. So if we run the game, we click, it's gonna move. It just stays in the T pose. 
So what we want to do next is go to the animator window. If you don't have this open, just go to window and then animation animator. We want the idle to be default. So if we drag that in first, why is it not letting me? Oh, we haven't made an animator yet. That would explain it. So let's go to create animator controller. We'll call this one player animator. Go to the player and we'll drag it in here. Uh, if you're using a model that doesn't already have one, like an animator set up, just drag the animator right on and it'll create a component here. Okay, so now that we have that, we want to go to the animator window. We're going to drag in idle, and that's going to be the default. So now if we play the game, idle is going to be the default. Okay, so he's idle. And then we also want to drag in the run. And over here, we're just going to click the plus, select bool, and I'm going to call this one is running. And this is going to be our condition to change. So if we right click idle, make transition to run, do the same again in back. What we want to do is click this one and we don't want any of these settings. So I'm going to take off has exit time, fixed duration, and the transition I'm going to set to zero because we want to go from idle instantly to run. And then down here on the conditions, hit the plus. Is running as true as what we want. Going back from run, we're going to do a little different. We don't want an exit time and we don't want fixed duration, but on the transition, I'll probably want, I think maybe like 0.4. That way it'll kind of blend the run animation into the idle so it won't look so abrupt. Uh, we'll see, we might have to do it on the player idle to run as well, but I don't think so. And then on the condition, we want this one to go when it's set to false. Okay, so that's all good. Let's just save that. Go into our player script. Okay, and we need to set up an animator now. Call it my anim. We'll get a reference to that here. Okay. And what we're going to do, we'll set it, when we set the destination here to tell, him, tell it to move on the nav mesh, uh, we'll set it here. So we're going to do myanim.setbool. And the spelling and case has to be exact on this. So easiest is just go back to your animator and just double click it and copy it. So we want to set it to true there. Let's just try this and make sure it's working before we do anything else. Okay, that looks all right there. Let's go back. And then what we're going to want to do in update, we'll make a separate one. So what we're going to want to do is do vector3.distance. And this is just going to measure the distance between where uh, the nav mesh is going and where it currently is. So you want to do my nav mesh agent dot destination, and then transform dot position. So this one here, it's just going to take the distance between these two points, and we want to see if that is less than our stopping distance. Okay, and if that is, then we're going to do my anim dot set pool. Let's set it again, and this time to false. Let's try this, and that should be working. There. So now if you can change these animations to anything you want. You can just go to Mixamo if you don't have any and get a bunch of free ones. But now our guy is working and running around and using those exit times uh, as well as the transition durations on the animator, you, you can fiddle with 
how it blends between the two. So if you want the stop to look a little more smooth or when he starts, um, that's all just preference and tweaking. Same with the, the speed and the rotate speed, things like that. But everything's working there. So we'll leave that one as it is. And in the next video, we'll start making the, the navigation path line.